Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam amma ba'da habita fillah from some of the issues that we face as a Muslim community is or one of the issues that we face is the issue regarding abuse that takes place in our communities. And unfortunately, these are long-standing issues which are not often spoken about. And unfortunately, in some of the communities, there is a history of abuse, of abuse of the Muslim woman, meaning that there are individuals from amongst our brothers who take advantage of the sisters, who abuse them physically, mentally, and spiritually. And more often than not, this happens in the bond of marriage, which should be a place, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions, of mawadda wa rahmah. The marriage institution should be a place of love and mercy. And it should be an inst and it is an institution and should be practiced as an institution where there is <coughs> where there is uh ta'awan, where there is uh cooperation in building a family. And this piece of advice stems from the many questions that we receive from sisters especially who are and have been in abusive situations with brothers. And that this is something we have to address as a community. So I'll try to be brief and I'll try to offer sincere advice and I will try my best to offer advice that is in accordance with the Book of Allah and the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam because the Prophet Alaihi Salatu Wasallam said a deen and nasiha, a deen and nasiha, a deen and nasiha. He said that religion is sincere advice and he mentioned it three times. Some of the Sahaba radiallahu ta'ala majma'een mentioned liman ya Rasulullah, to who? Ya Rasulullah. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Lillahi wa li kitabihi wa li wa li wa li The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said <clears throat> to uh, advices to Allah and his book and his messengers and the imams, the leaders of the Muslims and the general folk. And that this is sincere advice. And we've talked about in detail explaining that hadith, but we want to stick with the shahid, the, the important point that is relevant for us in this discussion, and that is advice for the general Muslims, that we have to advise one another. And we have to ta'awan ala biri wa taqwa wa na ta'awan ala ithmi wa adwan. And we need to cooperate in righteousness and not cooperate in wickedness, sinfulness, and hatred. And so, we know the asl is that the Muslim should cover one another's faults. As the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, that whoever covers a Muslim's fault in this life, Allah will cover his fault in the hereafter. However, we have to know, and Imam, we're going to look at some of Imam Anawi's uh, speech regarding this to see if this will be a help for us to show how our salaf, those who preceded us from Ahlul Sunnah, how they understood these texts and how they made exception when necessary. <clears throat> so, however, if doing so, meaning covering a Muslim's faults, will cause a greater harm than in this situation, he should his faults should not be covered. And perhaps he should be, he or she should be warned against. And that comes in two ways. Perhaps a brother or a sister has bid'ah. They have bid'ah that affects other people, especially if they're a da'i to bid'ah. They're a da'i 
a person who calls to innovation. And this could be innovation in their aqidah, in their creed, or innovation in their practice or their methodology of practicing and understanding Islam and calling to it. The second way in which a person could have mukhalifa or sinfulness is that they could be in fisk. They could be a fasik, and their sins could be harmful to other people. So if their sins are something that is not between them and, and Allah, but it affects the lives of other people and other Muslims in the community and other people in general, then perhaps in that scenario, they need to be warned against after being advised or taking it to a, an authority that can deal with that from amongst the Muslims, first and foremost. And we're going to talk about some of those details shortly. So in the situation for many of the sisters, they deal with some of the sisters, especially in marriage, they deal with brothers who are physically abusive or that they are emotionally abusive. They uh, either beat their wives. And we've had scenarios even where brothers have killed on more than one occasion. I can think of where Muslims that were supposed to be really strong on the deen and supposed to be on the sunnah, where one individual, he beat his wife so bad he killed her and went to prison for it. <clears throat> and another, his situation, he found his wife cheating and he killed her. These are real scenarios and was wanted by the authorities in America. So we have scenarios that we need to face, which are abusive scenarios that we need to deal with as especially the leaders in our communities cannot be coward, uh, express cowardice, but they need to confront these issues. And the students of knowledge, they need to deal with and give ilaj, give medicine to people who need, or else they will seek it elsewhere. They will seek that medicine and other means, sometimes halal, sometimes haram, sometimes in a way that will be harmful and shameful to the community, and sometimes in other ways. So it's very important to address the needs of those sisters. And first and foremost, sisters should strive to deal with those people in authority in their communities, to imams and people who are walis or people who have responsibility in their communities. And we're talking about here and being in a non-Muslim, uh, uh, being Muslim minorities and what we have to deal with in those uh, situations. So you either need to go to the Dawa Center if there is one, <coughs> or you need to go to uh, the Imam of the Masjid or a student of knowledge. And my advice is they need to have their doors open because we do know that many of them do not want to deal with this. There are many communities, sometimes culturally, they have their own cultural baggage and issues where they don't talk about issues. As the brother, the imam, uh, I don't recall his name, who spoke about the children being molested in his community in America, in California. He spoke out with anger because this is absolutely not acceptable. So we need imams like that who are willing to deal with those issues, not to keep everything hush-hush that the elders are molesting girls and boys. So it's very important that we have leadership that's willing to address these issues. So first and foremost, sisters should strive to deal with those in authority and warn against the harm. If it's their husband who's beating them, if it is their whatever and it's gotten out of control, then they need to try to seek counseling and seek advice from people who can help them, who have the knowledge and who have the ability and the experience to be able to deal with those issues. If the community cannot deal with those things, then if it comes to her rights, then she has the right to go to the authorities. And that means a Kafir authority, as the, the people would say, that they can go to a non-Muslim authority, the police, because if this man is continuing to put his hands on you and no one in the community will do anything nor speak to him, or anything, and you need to protect your life. So there, in that scenario, you have a right to get your rights through your through the government, and you have a right to get protection through the government. 
because no one is willing to uh, deal with and, and assist you. And some of the examples and scenarios, for example, if there's an individual molesting children, and there are those individuals who beat and abuse the women and the children, beat, beat and abuse their children and their stepchildren. Amen. And just if it is to the extreme abusive conduct, which is unbefitting of a Muslim, for example, they're involved in criminal activities, they're selling drugs, they're using drugs, and it's causing harm outside of your household, and you're advising, and you're advising, but it's becoming very, very bad, then you have a right to uh, seek your rights, and first and foremost, try to deal with that within the community. Sisters also need to take steps if they need to seek professional help, if need be, and alert a trustworthy person of knowledge about issues. So there is no harm because some of the sisters are shy and they're trying their best to cover the fault of their husband or cover the fault of someone who is active out there giving dawah but doing foul things with them. There are many scenarios like this, which is a, a, an unfortunate criminal conduct among some of the people, the callers to Islam, that they're not practicing what they preach. O oh, you who believe, why do you say that which you not do? This is something عظيم to Allah that you say that which you do not do. hypocrisy. I mean, And so, how did the fuqaha of Islam deal with this? And what is the delil for what I'm saying? Let's just look at. Uh, the statements of Imam Nawawi in his book, Riyadh al-Salihin. So Imam Nawawi, rahimahullah ta'ala, he mentioned in his book, Riyadh al-Salihin, he mentioned a chapter which addresses this issue about covering the faults of a Muslim and ghiba and namima. As we know, the Prophet ﷺ mentioned that that is one of the things that cause a person to be punished in the grave. And that is namima, spreading wickedness throughout the community, spreading the sins of individuals it's, and seeking pleasure by doing that. The Prophet ﷺ مَرَّ النَّبِي صلى الله عليه وسلم على قبرين فقال إنهم ليعذبان وما يعذبان في كبير أما أهدهما فكان لا يستتر من البول وأما الآخر فكان يمشي بالنميمة. The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said he, he was going by some graves and he said verily uh, they're being punished in the graves and they're being punished for something which isn't great which the people don't think is great. As for one of them they used to not correctly أكرمكم الله uh, clean themselves when they went to the restroom. As for the the second one, is they used to do namima, carry the sins and sinfulness, uh, spread wickedness throughout the community through uh, speech, okay, carrying tales about people. So we know the Muslims should cover one another's faults, and we know that it's impermissible to backbite and spread namima. Imam Anoui, entitled to chapter called Bab Ma Yubah, he said the chapter which uh, where it is per of when it is permissible to backbite. So the Muslim should rest assured that the ulama of Islam have dealt with these issues and they've looked at the text, the book of Allah and the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to understand and may it's the law from those nusus. Imam Anawi mentioned six scenarios and we're going to just be brief. We're not going to go into the details of what he said. He said one of the, the scenarios in which it's permissible to backbite or speak about someone, because some sisters are hesitant to mention the oppression and the abuse that is being uh, uh, committed against them under the guise of being afraid of backbiting. And this is a good fear, but however, there comes a time when it's time for your right, and it's, there comes a time when there is to lift off the oppression and pre prevent oppression, oppression in Munkar and uh, a greater harm. So Imam Anawi, he said, it's permissible for an oppressed person to speak before the judge 
or someone in a similar position of authority to help him or her establish his or her rights by telling him so and so wronged me and has done such and such to me. So that shows us first and foremost the permissibility according to the Fuqaha, according to the A'imma, like Imam Anoui, and he brings his evidence, and we're going to get sh very shortly into just one one of the pieces of evidence, one of the nusul, uh, a Nas from the Prophet wasallam, which illustrates this point. But he said, so the first scenario is if a person's being oppressed. And doesn't the, the woman who's being abused and fought and attacked or her children are being molested or whatever the case may be, she fits under that oppression. She's being oppressed by the shaitan. The second scenario, it is permissible to seek somebody's assistance in forbidding evil and helping someone change his or her, her uh, immoral conduct. So, from the bab of Emr bi Maruf and Nahiyan al Munkar, sometimes it, you may need assistance in preventing a harm. So, if a, a sister is being harmed, uh, beating, beaten physically, and she may get her relatives involved. Hey, you're not going to put your hands on me anymore. My, my pops is around. My brothers are here. My cousins are here. Or whatever the case may be. Or hopefully someone from the community or whatever the case scenario. Or as we mentioned, perhaps the police. You know, you want to stick within the context of the laws of your land so as not to cause a greater mafsada, a, a, a greater harm. Another scenario Imam Anoa mentioned, one who seeks legal verdict on a certain matter. So here, in this scenario, a sister could go, or a brother, to seek a fatwa. My husband is doing this and this and this. But what I want to caution the sisters about is being quick in these affairs, in getting the police, or even going to the sheikh and naming your, your husband and this and this and this, that these are serious matters. We're talking about something serious. He's beating you. He's oppressing you. Not just something you just don't like. He, he doesn't buy me candy. Uh, he likes such and such and I don't like such and such. Some picky uh, things to whine about, but rather these should be things which are legitimate harms. And legitimate harmful to your religion and or and or harmful to the religion of others. So there has to be a maslaha shari. There has to be a sharia uh, based objective, uh, a sharia based uh, uh, objective and benefit in speaking about this other Muslim's faults. Okay. Uh, another Scenario Imam Anoa mentioned, he said, one who criticizes those who openly commit uh, acts of disobedience, such as drinking wine, gambling. So someone who's an open sinner, if you see a sister, she's always at the club, okay? And you, for whatever reason, you, you witness this or whatever the scenario is. And then you know that she wants to get married to a brother who's maybe a righteous brother or whatever the case may be. And you know this about her. You know she has this problem, okay? She's open, and that's it. for sure you need to the brother should be warned and likewise the opposite okay that before a marriage uh that one you know someone who does open sins uh like that and causing fitna in the land also it is permissible imam anoe said uh, to call uh, call into question their narrators of hadith. Of course, this is not uh, as relevant for us now. Uh, and witnesses in court when the need arises. So, of course, in the si situation of court or whatever the case. Uh, or uh, Imam Anoui also mentioned that if you know a seeker of knowledge, a, a talib al-ilm, who's from Ahl sunnah but they're always with Ahl bidah they're always in their gatherings that they should be advised and they can be warned against. But I want to caution you about this too, that it's not based on your opinion. That you say, uh, because he listens to a scholar who's known from the sunnah, but because your particular four or five groupies and your clique and your his declares him to be a mubtadi'ah, and you see a talib al-ilm sitting in that gathering or whatever, he doesn't hold that view and it's based on knowledge, you have to be careful about that. So be cautious about some of these masail, all these masail, but especially uh, you yourself as, as a lay person, for us jumping into affairs which are much bigger than our qudra, much bigger than our ability and our uh, knowledge. 
And a last uh, scenario Imam Anoa mentioned when it's permissible to warn, it is permissible to you. Uh, he mentioned to use names about someone as long as it's not belittling them and so on and so forth, if they're known for that. But as he mentions, it's better to avoid this. So, and, and we know from other evidences uh, that it's better not to give people nicknames and some of the things the way the people belittle one another. But however, it lets us know uh, a scenario that's within the context of what he was talking about in this situation, relevant to what we're talking about, is in the situation of marriage. That uh, brother who's going to have a sit down with a sister, the sister should be aware about this brother. If people know bad things about him, he's been married 572 times, he has 3,000 children, and he's done this, and he's known for attacking women, or whatever the case may be. And likewise, the sister, she's been known to just ask for the khula, if, you know, for the most craziest uh, things and, and she has her own issues and she goes to the nightclub or whatever the case may be that these kind of issues need to be uh, made known. Uh, Aisha radiallahu ta'ala said a man sought permission for audience with the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He said give him permission but he is a bad member of his tribe and this is in Bukhari and Muslim. So Imam Bukhari, rahimahullah ta'ala, and some of the a'imma, they put this, he, they mention this to show that there are times when it's permissible to speak about another Muslim. That there is a maslaha, when there's a masla shari, because the Messenger of Allah, alayhi salatu wasalam, mentioned that this guy comes from a bad, he's a bad member of such and such tribe. We would say, whoa, how can you say that? That's a bad, you know, that shows us that it is permissible under certain circumstances to advise the Muslims, to warn from the Bab of Amr bi Maruf and Nahi al Munkar and other uh, uh, Masail and Abwab in the Shara, that it's permissible. So, for those sisters, and sorry to prolong and sorry to get off topic, those sisters who experience those things, that you have a right to seek your rights and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala lift all of our Muslim sisters from oppression and all of our brothers from oppression and bless us to be uh, righteous with one another and bless the Ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to ta'awin ala bir wa taqwa. Ameen ya rabbil alameen wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad.